you know, it's funny. I've, I've compared like running backwards or running forward to like a relationship. And the relationship I had with running forward was so great that the idea of like retraining my brain and trying to learn to run forward again, I kind of just want to remember running forward as like this great experience and now running backwards. <laughs> I didn't think that would be me at that age. I mean, I, I had always hoped that I'd run until I couldn't run anymore. And I thought that would be 80, not 31. My dad was a runner. He actually ran his first marathon the year I was born, um, which was New York City Marathon. At the time, it was like $26 to run New York City Marathon. Um, I started running when I was about three, um, and I would he would be marathon training, and by the time I was six, I was doing um, like fun runs. Um, so I'd round, run around the block on his cool down and try to beat him. Um, at the age of seven, my dad got Parkinson's, um, was diagnosed with Parkinson's, um, and his running started to um, deteriorate. So I remember as he was um, unfortunately losing his ability to run, I was ramping up my running. Um, I continued to run in high school um, and just fell in love with the sport. I think my dad having Parkinson's really showed me how important it is that we move until our bodies stop being able to move. In 2010, he passed away with Parkinson's disease. Um, before that, he had always been really excited about my running and asking questions about it. Um, so that was great. Um, so I continued to run. Um, and then when he passed away, I really got even more into running and found solace in running and just being with my dad. Um, a year after he passed away, I ran, I was running Boston and I got to mile 18 and something was just off. Um, I stopped at the medic tent, they took my blood and then asked me to continue running and I, I just couldn't. I had already run Boston twice, so I decided at that point that um, I just, I was gonna call it quits and come back next year and, and get a better time. Um, two weeks later, and I don't know if this is related, I took a fall um, on one of my runs and kind of hit my head. Initially, it initially just started to be, you know, my time slowed down and my left leg wasn't going, picking up as quickly. And then um, by August, I was barely able to walk. Um, about a week after that, I started, um, my left leg started not listening to my brain and I started to drag it, almost like drop foot. And it was pretty bad. In fact, I tore a hole in the bottom of my sneaker after only about 20 miles of running in it. And my pace went from like a seven minute or so pace to about a 10, 30, 11, 12. Um, so I went to physical therapy. Um, it started actually affecting my walking. So I would go from my grocery store, from my car to the grocery store and I would cry because I couldn't walk at the age of um, 30 at the time, I was 31. Um, so I, that was pretty, pretty hard. I went to every orthopedist. Um, I could find. I was in New Jersey, so I went all the way to Yukon. Um, so I went back to a hospital in New Jersey um, where a resident and I were working together and they thought perhaps maybe I had early onset Parkinson's. Um, since my father had Parkinson's and I had a genetic, there may have been, um, it may have been passed on from him. When I was looking up dyskinesia and Parkinson's and running, um, I found an article done on runner's dystonia. At the time, there wasn't a lot of information on it. Um, I brought that into the resident. He brought in the chief medical officer, and they decided that, yes, that's what I had, is something called vocal dystonia. Um, so it's similar to Parkinson's in that it's a movement disorder, um, but it's usually brought on by some sort of activity. When I was in physical therapy, I found that running backwards, I could run forever. Running forwards, I would, I would start crying. I wasn't able to do it. Um, so I started running backwards more and more. Um, and, you know, the nice thing about California, it's always sunny, so I don't slip on rain or anything like that. Um, and then I was... Um, the person I had met in California had mentioned how there's world records for running backwards for sprinting, and so I started looking up half marathons, because the more I did, the more easy it was. And so then I decided to try to break the world record. Um, so the first go about, um, I the GoPro gave out on me, and so I had to repeat it the next year, 
and I beat the world record. Um, and then the other cool thing was I got to run New York City Marathon backwards, which was probably the most amazing thing ever. So I did that for Michael J. Fox Foundation, which is for Parkinson's, um, and it was pretty amazing. It was took me six hours. My feet gave up on me like at, once I hit Central Park. Um, and then at mile 18, Michael J. Fox gave me a hug. And I didn't realize it was him. I thought it was maybe my brother. And I held on for dear life. And then I had to run. I'm like, sorry, Michael J. Fox, I gotta keep running. If you know anyone who's a runner knows there's something that happens when you run. Um, when you get to like mile two or mile three, your brain just, you know, the endorphins and your brain and the feeling of like, I've accomplished this run. Um, I got that a little bit from swimming, but not to the point of running. I mean, running pushes you past the limit, and I don't think I've ever felt that way um, in any other sport. And so, as much as I wanted to swim and, and bike, and, and now when I get injured running backwards, I appreciate the fact that I've learned to enjoy what I can do. I've ran since I was a little girl, and so not being able to run is just not an option for me, at least now. I took for granted running, and I would never take it for granted now. Every day I get out and go for a run is, I'm just so grateful that I can run. Um, and then just that, you know, not to give up. I, I mean, I think I kind of gave up in Boston, and I was like, I'm done with this, and I'll come back next year, but you, you never know what tomorrow will bring. So every day you can run, or every day you can, you know, do a race, like just, do it, just finish it, just like make that the most important day or moment of your running career. And then if tomorrow comes, great, but if not, you know, you did what you had to do on that day.